afternoon everyone. Thank you so much for joining another one of our live um, interview videos. Today I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by Karen Duffy and she is going to be talking to us about her sarcoidosis experience. Um, so absolutely delighted to have her join us um, all the way from America. So just before we get into the video, um, I would like to just point out a couple of things that we've got going on at the minute with our charity. Um, firstly, for those of you who did attend the um, Sarcoidosis Patient Day that we held with the Royal Brompton, thank you so much for attending. Um, the event was a massive success um, and it was held on the 1st of April, the first day of Sarcoidosis Awareness Month. Um, you can still watch the video back if you want to and we'll shortly be posting some clips online, some kind of shorter segments of some of the sessions and talks that the specialists did. Um, this evening we will be posting a link to the post-event survey so we'd love to hear your feedback um, about how you thought the event went um, and really get your kind of feedback and recommendations for what you'd like to see more of in the future. We hope to be able to make the event an annual one so um, any recommendations that you have or anything more you'd like to see we'd love to hear from you. Um, also want to say a massive shout out to all our fundraisers that we've got going on at the moment. Um, so many of you are taking part in our Warrior Walk for Sarcoidosis Awareness Month and we are absolutely thrilled at the amount that has been raised so far. Um, if you are one of those people, thank you so much. And if you still want to see other ways that you can get involved, um, then we will be posting the link to our Sarcoidosis Awareness Month webpage in the comments section. Um, we've got another fundraiser coming up soon that you can get involved with, a Bake Off that will be launching over the weekend and we've also got some new exciting things like products in the shop so we've got new hoodie colours and t-shirts to choose from a new bag design as well um, and also some Sarcoidosis Awareness Month Facebook frames that you can add to your profile pictures to spread awareness so lots of ways to get involved um, and we're really um, so grateful for the support that we've had so far this Awareness Month and as I said absolutely delighted that today we get to have another video um, interview with someone well known that has sarcoidosis so hearing from people like this this is really helping us to spread awareness and um, which is obviously a core goal of our charity so without further ado I'd like to introduce Duffy as I said she is um, an American writer and um, some of you may know her more commonly by the name that she goes by Duff um, but yeah thank you so much for joining us today Duffy it's great to have you thank you so much and I am so inspired with all the things that you guys are doing for my brothers and sisters who live with sarcoidosis with sarcoidosis UK so thank you Thank you so much. It's honestly, it's great to have you join us. Um, as I said, for those of you who don't know, um, Duff does go by the name Duffy. Um, you might uh, recognize her. She was um, kind of in a lot of modeling television commercials um, in the late 80s. Um, she also became a video jockey for MTV in the early um, 1990s. Um, and then she also went on to do some roles in film. Um, she was in um, Dumber and Dumber and most recently um, provided the voice for Linda Otter in um, Fantastic Mr. Fox. So some really notable kind of things there. It's so great to have you. Um, and then you've also kind of gone on alongside the, the TV side and the modeling and acting, also gone on to write some books as well, which we'll come on to shortly. But um, besides all those fantastic achievements, the main reason that we've got um, Duff joining us today is because she um, has sarcoidosis. Um, and we really wanted to chat to her a bit about her experience and how she's found living with them, this rare disease over the years. So are you all right to tell us a bit, Duff? just about how you were first diagnosed, when it happened, and, and how you kind of came to realise that you, you had sarcoidosis. Well, thank you for asking. Um, I was possibly, I was probably in my late 20s when um, I noticed I would have this peculiar headache that would pop up, and I, like, uh, and it was always the same spot. It was just right, right below my ear to my neck. And um, I was actually uh, doing a show uh, called TV Nation, which was actually produced by uh, BBC One, um, an international TV show with uh, Michael Moore, uh, the American uh, political writer. And we were nominated for an Emmy Award, which is a big TV award. And I just remember like, oh, this is such a great night, but my my neck hurts so badly. I was in LA and I flew directly to New York and went to see my doctor. And uh, who set me up with a neurologist. And like many of your clients and friends with sarcoidosis, it takes a long time to get diagnosed. And so it probably took about 18 months to two years to get a 
diagnosis of sarcoidosis of the central nervous system. So uh, I've kind of had it, you know, in my respiratory system, in my eyes, but um, I would say uh, the most dominant is in my central nervous system. And so I've got a granuloma. My doctor's Italian and he says it's the size of a mostaccioli. So between my, between my uh, spinal column up to my medulla. Um, and one of the biggest issues, and I think many people understand this, is that really there's not a lot of visible indications to our friends and our loved ones that we are really dealing with a heavy load. And um, so with me, it's the chronic pain because the granulomas uh, destroyed so many nerves. So that's probably the biggest issue that I deal with, but I try to squeeze as much as I can out of every day. Yeah, no, I think that's, it's a great way to live kind of from your point of view, as you said, trying to make the most of the situation. But as you said, I think it is something that a lot of people do can empathize with because people who have sarcoidosis and have to live with it, as you said, it's an invisible disease and that can make it really quite hard for friends and family to understand what you're going through. And it can also make people feel quite lonely sometimes because they feel they're just fighting this invisible battle. No one really understands. And it's really hard to try put into words when someone can't physically see it. Um, have you, did you find that with some of your, your friends and family, did you have that kind of struggle at the start, I suppose, of trying to convey to them what it was and how you were feeling? You know, Charlotte, I think the biggest, um, I would say the, the biggest hurdle was kind of accepting it within my own life because I was so young and I was on this career path and it felt like I had built a plane by hand. And right when I was ready to take off, I kind of had to put it back in the hangar and put myself back together again. So um, I think I had to accept that my life was going to change and, um, and it was interesting, you know, one of the impacts of having a chronic illness is the sense of shame or embarrassment. I was embarrassed to extract all the worry resources from my family. Uh, I was embarrassed that uh, I didn't want to lose all my jobs that I worked so hard for. Um, I... Uh, uh, some people still don't quite understand, and many um, people will be familiar with the saying, well, but you look so good. And I always think, well, that's a compliment. Uh, but uh, to many people who live with chronic illness, it can be quite tedious because it shows that perhaps they don't understand. Um, so it's every day. It's, you know, I've been dealing with it. I mean, I'm a grizzled old veteran of sarcoidosis. So to any, you know, young upstarts, I want you to know I'm here for you and in any way that I can be of service. That's great. I think it's really reassuring for people who have just been diagnosed um, to know that there are other people out there who both experience the same thing and have kind of gone on this longer journey of sarcoidosis. And it's so great to hear that you have got to the point today where you're at, that you have kind of found a way to live with the disease, um, but still get the most out of kind of everyday life and be as positive as you are. It's, it's very inspiring. And I'm sure a lot of people will um, will take kind of great comfort in that fact that you've been able to get to that point. Um, am I right in um, thinking that after you kind of actually got diagnosed, you actually did um, go on to train as a hospital chaplain? Is that right? Where you kind of give yeah. support and things to people that um, need a chat and stuff when they're going through going through something like this? Yes. Um, uh, before I worked at MTV, uh, back when they played music, um, I had been volunteering at a nursing home since I was 12 years old old and you know I just we have a motto in our family that it, service is the rent we pay for life on earth and so I always felt that my service was you know working with the elderly um and I really enjoyed it and 
I, when I got sick um, and I figured, you know, when I get well enough, you know, my goal, well, I had to shift. And like, like, like everyone, even just coming out of this pandemic, we're all having to adapt and shift. And I believe that all skills are transferable. So your life doesn't, you know, end. Your professional life doesn't have to end. Your love life. You know, I met my husband when I was actually at my most unwell. And um, I just feel like, you know, there's so much we can do. And that's what I try and focus on. Um, I'm deeply inspired by uh, my favorite philosopher, one of the Stoics called Epictetus. And um, he believes like, we can't control what happens. We can only control our response. And uh, so I've just tried to respond with grace and with vigor and um, with the goal of helping others. And so far that's worked out. It's, as I said, it's such an admirable way to approach things. And I think that obviously clearly has such a positive impact on your outlook and things at the minute. And something that actually really resonated me, with me when you were saying that about how you kind of, your life doesn't stop, it just adjusts. And we see that in our community of Sarcoidosis UK supporters as well. Um, we've actually got a fantastic lady, Juliet, at the minute. She is, she's always wanted to run a marathon. Um, and unfortunately, due to her sarcoidosis, she isn't able to. Um, but for Sarcoidosis Awareness Month, she has kind of taken on her own challenge where she's doing um, 3,000 meters um, in 30 days, which kind of for many people, they that doesn't sound like a lot, but to her, that is really such a challenge. Um, she has to be aided by oxygen um, and it's, it's a real uphill struggle. Um, but for her, that is such an example of kind of adjusting to life with her sarcoidosis and the fact that her dreams aren't over. They've just been adjusted to kind of cope exactly. with the sarcoidosis and still be able to do something incredible. Um, so yeah, it's, I think a lot of our supporters are going to really be able to empathize with that. Um, we've Fantastic. Had some people, yeah, we've had some people commenting live that are watching us. So thank you so much for joining. Um, Ali on Facebook said, Duff, you're amazing for talking, uh, talking so openly about this. Um, and Elizabeth also said that she agrees the feeling of embarrassment and trying to justify her illness can be exhausting. So as I said, I think a lot of people really do um, completely empathise and understand where you're coming from with that. Um, mm -hmm. Could you talk to us a bit then um, about the two books that you've written? So am I right in thinking you wrote, wrote one quite a few years ago and then what, one more recently in 2017, was it? Yes. Um, uh, actually, I've, um, uh, I wrote a book called Model Patient, My Life as an Incurable Wise-Ass, which was really, I would say, the... The beginning of my, you know, of, of making the adjustments to live with a chronic illness. Uh, my most recent book called Backbone, um, it's living with uh, chronic pain without turning into one. And, um, and then I have a new book about uh, Stoic philosophy that will be coming out in 2022. But I think um, uh, what's really interesting is that, you know, the word chronic comes from the Latin chronos, meaning time. So essentially having a chronic illness is an illness that transcends time, where acute comes from the Latin acu, meaning sharp. So when you have an acute illness, uh, there's usually a visible injury and it lasts up to about three months. Any time from three months to the rest of your life is a chronic illness. And... Um, I felt that was kind of helpful to explain, um, you know, to people. Um, uh, because again, people have, sarcoidosis is somewhat unpronounceable and uh, it is so rare. So I'm, I'm so grateful for everything that um, you are doing to get the word out. Thank you. It's as I said, well, you're helping us today by being a part of it. So it's great to have you talk about your experiences. Um, and I think it would be great as well, like um, with uh, the books to just kind of put those out there to our supporters. If you do um, kind of want to check out Duffy's books, they are available on Amazon. Um, and it's really quite, it's interesting the way that you tackle things. So I think you, you deal with sarcoidosis and the the effects of it in your books with quite a lot of wit and kind of humor. Um, I feel like the impression I get is that that's how you deal with kind of everyday life as well and just try to have that that positive en energy kind of residing through. Would you say that's quite accurate? 
Yes, well, you know, every day um, I try and be of service. And listen, today is a, a really good day for me. Um, and, you know, I take a lot of medicine. I'm very uh, compliant um, with what my doctors um, suggest for me. Uh, I wear a lidocaine patch, maybe some of your um, uh, members. It's, it's, a, it's a pain patch. And I was out to dinner um, outside before the pandemic, and I was sitting next to the cellist, Yo-Yo Ma, and he's really charming and outgoing, and he said, you know, what is that thing on your neck? And it's about the size of a playing card. And I said, well, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a pain patch. It's a prescription patch for chronic pain. And he, he very directly said, what's it like to live with chronic pain? And we were outside in the garden and it was evening and the mosquitoes were buzzing around and it kind of had this epiphany. Like when you get a mosquito bite, it itches. So you scratch it. And so when you're scratching it, you are like trading the sensation of the itch for a low level pain. And I think when I, with me living with chronic pain, I'm always looking for low level happiness. So I'm always looking for a small way. One of the things I do every day is write a thank you letter. And you know, with it's not about reciprocity or starting a pen pal, but I just write a letter, you know, to some random person or somebody I know, but every day I try and it just even if I can just get that one thing done. I buy postcards everywhere and just saying thank you. You know, I appreciate what you're doing, or I'm sorry you're going through a difficult time. And uh, that to me is a low level way of filling my life up. I feel like my head's a giant pinata and I'm just trying to shove it with good vibes rather than candy. Yeah. Candy too sometimes. <laughs> a bit of both. Always good to have balance in life. <laughs> but mm -hmm. Definitely. No, that's, um, as I said, it's, that sounds like such a good, a good outlook to have on things. Um, with, obviously you mentioned the chronic pain um, and you mentioned that you're using a patch. Do you find that other medication has kind of helped over the years? Do you have, do you think since your diagnosis, you've seen any kind of change in the way that sarcoidosis is being treated? Or do you think that we've still got a way to go with things like that? Well, um, I think with organizations like Sarcoidosis UK and here in the United States, Stronger Than Sarcoidosis, um, you know, we're all doing our best because it's such a mysterious disease. It's also a, an orphan disease, meaning that um, it, it feels like a lot of us have it, but, you know, globally, um, the numbers are rising. Um, and, uh, in the United States, because of the opioid epidemic, it's been, um, frustrating, uh, to get pain medication. Um, and the laws are somewhat unstable and, uh, it's something that I rely on every single day of my life for the past 25 years. Um, I do see that in the U.S. they're asking, um, doctors are recommending more um, Neurontin called Gabapentin. It's a generic name. Um, and that is a anti-seizure medication, which has also been successful for pain treatment. Um, and then in the U.S., um, uh, CBD has become uh, CBD oil uh, and medical marijuana, but that's not really my thing. But I, I am trying CBD. I'll, I'll, I'm trying a topical CBD, which has been great. Yeah, I think it's really interesting to hear um, kind of just from over the pond how stuff has been with you, because obviously it's I feel like especially in the last year, everyone has been incredibly insular um at, just as a result of the pandemic um we're actually just kind of coming out of our lockdown in stages here in the uk so a lot of our um sarcoidosis community have been classed as clinically extremely vulnerable and they've been shielding for the best part of the last year which has been really really difficult um kind of both from the point of view of not being able to meet their consultants as regularly um and then 
possibly not having anyone really to talk to about the um their changes and things that they're experiencing um even just kind of down to the fact that they're so isolated and can't meet anyone and um, because being classed as vulnerable obviously they're at that higher risk um so i think the pandemic in itself has brought its own bout of challenges that's been really really difficult for everyone and um, do you think has that really impacted you on um in your side in the states as has the pandemic kind of had that effect on people who have underlying conditions and diseases in that way yes it's been um uh in new york city um where i live um, uh, i'm up at my family's farm right now but new york city also has been extremely locked down and uh it's been great to see um everyone compliant and i would usually see uh, my doctor every month and I see him on video chats. Um, and, uh, it's, um, I think it's important, um, you know, to do what you love and lots of it when you deal with the, uh, the stress of having a chronic illness, economic insecurity, and, um, and just being so isolated. And so, um, uh part is just as much as uh morphine ms content lidocaine patches and gabapentin are my um are, are the medicines i take i find that i get great happiness from reading so i feel like you know books are a big part of my therapy walking are, is a big part uh um and again like i can't really keep up with my husband and son so you know like i i'm like listen if you want to do cardio you guys walk ahead but i'm just taking it all in in japan um there's it's it's called shinrin yuku which translates to forest bathing and i love that idea of just bathing in a forest and just you know getting out as much as you can and um uh, being on lockdown, uh, two nights a week, I have, uh, happy hour calls with different groups of friends. And that really helps. That really helps. And just trying to stay connected because this has been hard for all of us, but it's really been challenging, um, when you live with a chronic illness. Absolutely. Yeah, I think, as you said, it's been so important for everyone to stay connected. And I know that things like like Zoom or FaceTime and that it's become such a big part of our lives that we never even anticipated it um, to be. But it's kind of been the savior for a lot of people. And um, just mm -hmm. kind of coming back to the family and friends side, um, we have quite a few people within our Sarcoidosis UK community as well who are not personally affected themselves. They aren't diagnosed with sarcoidosis, but they have a friend, family or loved one um, who has been diagnosed and sometimes it can be quite confusing or they don't quite know what best to do how to support them is there any advice that you think you can give to someone who wants to be there for someone who's got sarcoidosis but they just don't quite know how and um, what would you suggest in your experience is the best way to support someone you know it's um i find you know with my work as a uh patient advocate is um, I find that I um, just saying, I'm here if you need me. That is really the best we can do is, uh, and some, you know, people, um, if you have a loved one who's been isolated, you know, maybe helping them with the groceries, uh, I have neuropathy and can't carry things, I'm always dropping things. Um, it's hard to walk my dog with chronic pain. So one thing that really helps is offering, you know, saying, I'm here if you need me. And you know what, I'm really good at carrying in, you know, the wine that you may need this week, or the groceries or walking your dog. So, you know, can I pick up your laundry, something, something specific, a general, how do you do? But one of the things, Charlotte, I think is, uh, we often don't know what to say. Um, and for me, just saying, I'm here if you need me has been really the best advice I can share. Definitely. I think that's the main thing, isn't it? Just for people to know that they have got someone, they're not alone. Um, and it really does make the world of difference for someone. Um, and it's those little things, as you said, stuff that 
if you aren't impacted by sarcoidosis, you wouldn't even think twice about. But for someone who is really suffering, especially experiencing chronic, chronic pain and other symptoms like that, it can make the world of difference. Um, but just in terms of the support as well, um, Sarcoidosis UK do have kind of resources that we have to support you. We've got a very active Facebook group. Um, so if you're not already part of that, I would encourage you to join. Um, we've got, I think, almost up to 6,000 members now. Um, and that's such a community of people, as you touched on before, this disease is rare, but the community of people who do have it are so supportive and very engaged with one another and um, you kind of stick together more I think when you're small in numbers but kind of mighty in force as they say um, mm -hmm. so that Facebook group is available and we've got another one as well for kind of family and friends of people who have sarcoidosis so definitely check those out if um, if you think that those could be of help to you and um, we've had a couple more comments come in and um, people are absolutely loving the interview so thank you so much for joining us um, today Duff um, so Dara on Facebook said it's absolutely um, fantastic um, with uh, neurosarcoidosis being so rare and um, neurosarcoidosis patients rarely meet others who have the same type of sarcoidosis as them um, and that can be quite hard having no one to identify with um, or use as a reference point to explain your condition so it's so great that you've been able to get the word out um, and Lorraine Duff actually said hello Karen you are my namesake <laughs> so mm -hmm. someone with the same name um, there we go a bit of an inspiration there for you um, mm -hmm. so then just um, in terms of going forward what would you like to see change um in the next few years with sarcoidosis and how do you think we can raise even more awareness obviously we're a small charity sarcoidosis uk but as i said mighty in force and we we really try um get our impact as far reaching as possible by funding things like vital research um, but what would you like to see change in the next few years over sarcoidosis awareness and kind of getting healthcare professionals more aware of the disease and also the general public? Well, um, <clears throat> I would love to see that Stronger Than Sarcoidosis and Sarcoidosis UK will, will have a big party to celebrate um, the, uh, the cure. Um, but in until then, um, I think it, it would be great to do more events like this, like um, internationally, um, like checking in again, because um, being mighty in numbers. Um, you know, um, what's interesting is um, we are coming up on the 20th anniversary of the 9-11 um, World Trade Center attacks. And what's really interesting, Charlotte, is that, um, so, 2,973 people died that day. But since then, uh, another 20,000 have died of 9-11 um, uh, related illnesses. And um, sarcoidosis is actually a, um, is, is, is the number two disease um, of, that's causing illness in first responders in uh, workers. And um, uh, there's a comedian who's a good pal of mine. Um, his name is John Stewart. And um, he's been incredible supporting uh, the Sarcoidosis Foundation. Um, and I think just like events like this, just you and I have, having a chat. Now I can go back to my team and say, you know what, we've got to, they're doing great things. I love your warrior walk. I want to, I'm going to go, I'm going to go support for 10 people on um, after we get off on this, on, on their walk. I love that you're doing a bake sale. Again, um, you know, it's just every day taking a step closer. I mean, that's what's so incredible is just that, um, you know, we could just sit on our butts and just think, oh, you know, I'm sick, I don't feel good. But to know that you can make a small effort um, and, it can have a huge result. I mean, I'm so grateful that you reached out for me today and just, you know, to connect with the people who are um, asking questions. It is, I am so deeply honored. Um, and uh, I hope I can do more. And, um, uh, you know, it's hard. One of the things is I can no longer, I'm no longer insurable um, to work as an actor. Um, so I've been a, become a producer and a writer, and I'm always trying to get the message of sarcoidosis out. 
I feel like that is my duty. That's my responsibility. Yeah, well, thank you so much. Equally, Duff, it's been absolutely incredible chatting to you today and everyone um, who's been watching us live. The, the feedback has been incredible. I think it's, as I said, so great to have someone um, of your stature kind of talk out um, about sarcoidosis and help raise awareness. And kind of to touch on what you said about taking those small little steps, it really does relate back to the people who are supporting our charity at the moment. You really are the ones who are helping to make a difference. Um, we don't receive any government funding, so we are 100% reliant on your generous donations. And it is only through things like the donations and our incredible fundraisers and people who are willing to kind of take those small steps together that we're actually able to make an impact like that. Um, so it does really show that even though if you are doing something literally so small as, you know, making a five pound donation or partaking in a fundraiser activity, you are really helping us reach that goal and kind of be one step closer also hopefully to one day finding a cure, but in the meantime, supporting people living with the disease um, and being there and being that source um, that source of information as well. Um, because with rare disease, we know that sometimes the information out there is scarce. Um, so I think it, it really does all come into one and play a massive part. So thank you for kind of highlighting that as well. Um, but I think that is, um, that's all the questions that have kind of come in at the moment. Um, as I said, I would absolutely love to do another one of these videos in the future with you. And I think everyone would as well. Um, but for the time being, we'll leave it there for today. Um, honestly, thank you so much, Duff. Um, I can't thank you enough for joining us. And it's been so great chatting to you. Um, so yeah, thank you very much. Great to have well, you. Thank you, Charlotte. And to all my brothers and sisters with sarcoidosis, I'm here if you need me. <laughs> you can find me on social media uh, at, uh, I think I'm at Duffy NYC and um, uh, on Instagram and Twitter. I don't really do Facebook as much, but I am going to check in and, um, and help you out and uh, get one of those colorful hoodies because I want to spread the word. <laughs> That's great. Thank you so much, Duff. Well, as I said, everyone, any kind of impact, um, it really is heartfelt when people um, are partaking in things like our fundraising activities or making donations so if you are at all able to um, I would encourage you to um, just click on the link um, in the video which will take you through to our donation page we've also posted the link to the sarcoidosis awareness month um, web page so please do check that out we'll have some other things um, coming up throughout the month and um, to continue raising awareness but for everyone who has been involved thank you so much and um, thank you once again to Duff and I look forward to speaking to you next